This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Doesn't look like this global chip shortage is going to start to right itself until sometime next year. And so IHS market is slashing its production forecast for this year, next year, and even into 2023. It expects automakers to produce nearly 76 million vehicles this year, which is a reduction of 6.2% from its original forecast, or the equivalent of more than 5 million units in lost production. For 2022, it cut its forecast by 9.3%, or nearly 8.5 million units, and in 2023, it still sees production off by more than a million vehicles. But the good news, if this forecast is right, production will return to normal in the middle of next year. Then pent-up demand will cause pressure to build up inventory, which will lead to increased production in 2024 and 2025. Speaking of production, Ford must not want Rivian stealing all the spotlight for being the first automaker to deliver electric pickup trucks to customers. It revealed that it has started building pre-production versions of the F-150 Lightning at its Rouge Electric Vehicle Center in Michigan. Last month, reports came out that Ford is increasing its investment into the electric truck due to demand being higher than it expected. With reservations now over 150,000, it's spending an additional $250 million into the Rouge EV Center, as well as two other facilities that feed into that site. That will allow Ford to make up to 80,000 Lightnings a year by 2024, up from an original goal of 40,000 a year, and it will require 450 new workers at the three plants. The F-150 Lightning will have a starting price around $40,000 and a driving range of up to 300 miles. And let's stick on the manufacturing side of things for a moment. The Hyundai Group is not wasting any time to leverage its newly purchased toy, Boston Dynamics. It's running a pilot safety program at Kia's plant in South Korea with Boston Dynamics quadruped robot Spot, which you're likely to have seen performing a number of tasks before. Using thermal cameras and a 3D LiDAR, Spot is able to detect possible fire hazards, identify hard-to-see areas, and even allow plant and office personnel to remotely observe the plant, which is all done through a secure web page. Kia will use this test to see if it's worth expanding into other areas as well. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. Not long ago, diesel cars used to account for more than 50% of new car sales in Europe. But that's quickly changing. According to LMC Automotive, the diesel share of new car sales fell below 20% in August, which is the lowest it's been since 2001. A bit surprisingly, Germany accounted for a big part of that decline. 30,000 fewer diesels were sold there in August compared to last year. And while diesels still outsell battery electric vehicles in Europe, the gap is closing fast. 125,000 diesels were sold in August, compared to 84,000 BEVs. But in the UK, the gap is closing even faster. Diesels only outsold electrics by 1,000 units last month. The cost of batteries could start to increase due to rising prices of the metals needed to make them. According to Bloomberg, battery prices have declined sharply over the last decade, from $1,200 per kilowatt hour to just $137 per kilowatt hour in 2020. 
but about 40% of the cell's cost is related to materials that have risen in price over the last year, which means the previous trend could reverse. Bloomberg says it won't last for long, but over the next few years, battery prices could be higher, which will impact the margins automakers make on EVs. And if higher EV prices hurt sales, automakers could face fines in regions like Europe for not meeting emission targets. Stellantis is getting set to test two different connected vehicle technologies in the U.S. The first will demonstrate a 5G cellular connection with a multi-axis edge computing platform. It uses on-site cameras and sensors to collect data at an intersection beyond what a vehicle's onboard system can see. Any potential risks can then be communicated with pedestrians and approaching vehicles. Two Jeep Wrangler 4xe plug-in hybrids with Uconnect will be used for the test. Stellantis plans to launch the technology in the U.S. within the next decade. The second connectivity test involves a cloud-based warning system to alert drivers to emergency response vehicles or other road hazards through the vehicle's Uconnect system. If that test goes well, Stellantis will look into rolling out the technology in the future. Wuling, which is part of the GM-SAIC Chinese joint venture, is expanding its lineup. It launched the Asta, an SUV that's about the same size as a Chevy Equinox. And like the Equinox, it comes standard with a 1.5 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine, but it's mated to a CVT. That setup propels the Astra from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 10.6 seconds. Once inside, passengers will be able to enjoy a large panoramic sunroof and a 10 and a quarter inch floating display screen. There are going to be five variants of the Asta that are priced between nearly $11,000 to roughly $15,500. We recently had the Volvo XC60 Polestar plug-in hybrid roll through the Autoline garage, and we came away fairly impressed with the crossover. Outside of its gold brake calipers that hint at its performance, you wouldn't know this thing is a rocket just by looking at it. Powering the vehicle is a 2-liter, super, and turbocharged engine mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission. Combined with the electric motors, it cranks out 415 horsepower and nearly 500 pound-feet of torque. It has about 20 miles of electric range, and fuel economy when running only on gasoline isn't too shabby at 27 mpg combined. It's a pleasure to drive and also whisper quiet while driving, especially when running only on electricity. And while it is impressively quick, the interior is the real star of the show. The model we drove came with black leather seats with white stitching and gold seat belts that stand out nicely in the mostly black interior. It really adds to the premium feel, but you're going to have to pay up for that. The model we test drove costs just over $71,000. But that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Scheffler, we pioneer motion. And by Magna. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.